What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So we are back again, you know, for another episode of What It Is uh, video. Girl, I don't even know what value this is. Girl, it's just a video. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we actually got something to talk about this video, it amazes me because it has not really been that much that's been going on. Listen, um, let's just get into it. One of the big stories, especially after I put my video up and did my live last week, was the whole thing that happened with the um, Yaya Mayweather. Okay, Yaya Mayweather and NBA Young Boy. First of all, let me pause. I hope everybody is doing well. You know what I'm saying? Um, I seen that. L.A. County, they extended their stay at home, staying home, shelter in place until I think May 15th or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure given that a lot of states, pretty uh, people, if they keep on extending it, I'm pretty sure we're going to get extended too out here in Chicago. Y'all need to just learn to stay in the house, okay? Just stay in the house, please, all right? Um, and listen, listen. I'm not here for the conspiracy theories, okay? If you one of those conspiracy theories, theorists and, and y'all believe in this dumb shit about the 5G, which if you look it up, you know, they're already being reports saying that that's false as shit, okay? Now, if you are not, do not have a degree in technology, you do not have a degree in science, um, computer science, you do not have a degree in the medical field, I will never take your information, especially if you are getting information from false and fake ass pages from the you know, internet, you know, fake internet sources, okay, and you're getting information off of YouTube videos from people that have no degree in this situation. You know what I'm saying? So, come on, we gotta use our minds, okay? If we was fucking around with five, if five G really had something to do with this shit, wouldn't it happen a long time ago? And your ass still using the fucking five G as we talk right now, tweeting the shit. You tweeting on four G? You tweeting on three G? I think the fuck not. I think your internet is going fast because of it. Get the fuck out of here. It's just some things. I, and let me just say this. These conspiracy theories does not do anybody good. Okay. It does not do anybody good when you are out here putting and inciting more fear into people who are already fear driven. That's what they want. You know, you want you, you talking about some, oh, you don't, that's what the government wants to incite fear and all that stuff. But you're part of the problem. Doing these stupid ass conspiracy theories. People are scared enough. People scared to go outside as it is. And you are out here putting out these dumb ass, stupid ass, can be proven false ass conspiracy. One bitch going to tell me something. You got to look up your research. I'm not looking up no research on no shit that don't even sound plausible. Okay? Come on. Why 5G? What happened? Why not 4G? Why it ain't happened with 4G? Why it ain't happened with 3G? Why it ain't happened with none of that? Like, come on. We got to stop being so goddamn gullible and so damn stupid and believing what, that's what you say. Oh, you got to do your research and not believe what everybody say, but you believe in what everybody say. You jumping on the bandwagon too, talking about this 5G shit. It just don't fucking make sense. Like, come on, stop that bullshit. Stop scaring people. That's what you are doing. You are scaring people. And yet you up here talking about 5G, but you got a whole bunch of technology and shit up in your goddamn house. Okay? Come on. What about those products? You've been using your cell phone forever and the goddamn mic away bitch and your smart tv okay and the tablet and all the other shit that you've been using that's technical technical base okay it just don't make sense if you're gonna come up with something come up with something that makes sense and that goes to all the stupid ass celebrities that's doing this shit too and y'all following behind their ass it's like come on come on like think for your fucking selves like if it don't sound plausible Come on, okay? It's just stupid. Talking about something they're going to put a chip up in us. Bitch, ain't nobody got time for that shit. We trying to find a fucking vaccine for this shit. And if you don't want to take the vaccine, that's on your ass, okay? Be out here doing whatever you got to do. Anyway, um, I just had to get that off my spirit because I'm tired of seeing it. And I can't believe that out of all the conspiracy theories that I've heard throughout my years, that's one of the dumbest. That got to be one of my top three dumbest, okay? And it's not number one, but it ain't number three. It's number two. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. One of. Anyway, um, speaking of, girl, speaking of Miss Girl, since we on that plate, you know, um, I give shout outs and I'm sending prayers and, you know, love and strength to Kevin from the Scorpion Show. His mother was diagnosed with Miss Girl and also Nika from That Ghetto View. I told you about her. She was diagnosed as well. You know, I hope they get better. Um, 
I don't know if Kevin per se has it, but he's been in the house. He's been around his mother. So, you know, um, if he does, I just hope he keeps his strength up. And like he said, he's trying not to stress about it. So I hope he keeps that mentality, you know, and I'm just going to do nothing but pray, 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 pray. I've been praying so much for everybody. Like I pray for everybody as it is, but I just do so much more praying these days because it's just a scary time. And I noticed that like when the CDC and they came out saying that we need to go ahead and start wearing face masks everywhere, that we need to go like to the to the shopping and and to the grocery store, to the pharmacy and stuff like that. First they said we didn't need to, now they saying we do. Listen, that shit took my anxiety from coming down. My anxiety was already trying to come down from here to here. And it brought it right back up. And then knowing people that's close to me or I've known, I've met, I've associated with, have have experienced this illness, this um virus or whatever, it's just it's girl, it's 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 fucking me up. It's it's really fucking me up, okay? Um but I, I just pray for her, pray for them. Um that was supposed to be, speaking of that, there was supposed to be a little battle that was going on. And I know y'all remember it and heard about it like last week. It was supposed to happen this past Sunday. Okay. We was all looking forward to it. I was looking forward to logging on to IG Live, you know, because of the past battles that we had. Um, we had the one with Sean Garrett and, um, you know, what's his name? The Dream. We had the one with Jonte Austin. I can't believe a lot of people did not know who Jonte was. Jonte is a beast there. Y'all got to get into it, okay? Don't just look at the artists. You got to look at the people behind the scenes, all right? Jonte and Neo, you know what I'm saying? We saw their battle, and then we saw the T-Pain versus Lil John. Lil John won that shit, to be quite honest, and T-Pain knew, you know? And I love that battle for the simple fact of... You could tell that they were friends. You could tell that they was friends. It was nothing but camaraderie. This was nothing but something to give to the people, to brighten our days, to, you know, let us just bump and, you know, relive our childhood, relive our uh, high school years, teenage years. Ugh, my tongue. I got to stop drinking and eating stuff before I get on this camera because it be, god damn, god damn. Anyway, but um, anyway, you know. We was looking forward to that, okay? And then the battle came about saying that Teddy Riley and Babyface was supposed to do their little thing on Sunday. Then when Sunday come, bitch, they said that shit was going to be postponed. I said, wait a minute, what happened? And, you know, throughout the week or whatever, Teddy Riley giving interviews, talking about, and he wanted the motherfuckers that think about the 5G girl and then call it G5. You don't even know what it's called and you up here spilling out stuff that don't even you can't even get the words right the the lettering and the positioning right girl i said teddy you gotta stop you know he out here basically trying to make it seem as though you know the platform he didn't want instagram to get all the money or whatever from the views or whatever from looking at the um the um having the battle and then um because it's supposed to be Teddy Riley versus Babyface, the hits that they had, the, their best 20 songs, okay? And I don't know how in the world that they were going to do that. Because between the both of them, between the both of them, bangers. And I mean decades of bangers, okay? Especially Babyface. Babyface is responsible for a whole bunch of m motherfucking music. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, how is this going to happen? This is going to be interesting. Everybody was looking forward to it. He talking about, no, nah, it ain't going to happen because, first of all, he said Babyface was sick. And he that's all that he said. And then said that it wasn't the virus or whatever the fuck. Kind of find out. Babyface and put it out there that, yes, baby, we were sick. He tested positive for Miss Girl. And then his whole family had tested positive. But now they've been in um, quarantine or whatever, so they good and they tested negative or whatever. And I was like, damn, that's fucked up. And I was like, so Teddy out here trying to make it seem like, you know, they need a bigger platform so they can get some money off of it. He can put his little technology shit up on it, you know. And I'm just sitting here like the way that the wording of the little statement that Babyface put out earlier today, like a few hours ago, was basically making it sound as if he never really agreed to the battle up until now and then he put out there that it's been postponed it's going to you know he's feeling better he's getting his strength back whatever but the um battle is actually going to go on 
on the 18th. It's going to happen on the 18th on Instagram, his Instagram. So just in case y'all was looking forward to it, you know, like I'm still going to tune into it, you know, um, if you've got on a Twitter or whatever, or probably IG, I'm pretty sure he posted it on IG as well. And it's on Twitter, you know, what time and what day it's going to be at. And I was just like, that is crazy. You just want to know who had it and who don't. But I'm looking forward to it. And I feel like it's, if done right, if done right, it's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a good battle. And to be quite honest, it's no real battle. It's just them putting up their best work. That's how I look at it. I don't look at no battle or no competition because they both are good producers, good songwriters and all that. And they both have major hits. I'm just listening to the hits, okay? I just want to get lost in my thoughts and my memories and shit like that. Because that's how it was when I was listening to the T-Pain and Lil, Lil John one. Yes, bitch. It was taking me back. I mean, when I say it was taking me back, it was taking me back to my thought years. Girl, ooh. Anyway, I have grown. <laughs> Quarantine has grown me. Anyway, moving on from there. Um, <laughs> let's just get up into the mess that's been happening this week. Okay, like I was starting on talking about this whole thing with Yaya Mayweather. Now, every time it's some stuff coming up with him, I mean, with her and um, NBA young boy, y'all don't never hear me talking about it. I, I bypass that little shit because I don't give a shit about that. That's some child's play shit. I don't listen to the music. They dumb or whatever. But I couldn't resist this one because it's been a hot topic because of the fact that this girl, this boy is known to fuck around, okay? Known to fuck around. And at one point, I believe they broke up. He did a diss song about her or something like that. Got back together with her. She walked in on him with his baby mama, one of his baby mamas or whatever. She fucked around and stabbed this bitch. This bitch was up in critical condition at the hospital and then was back, you know, got arrested, got bailed out and was back in that motherfucker bed the same day. The same day. You literally about to lose your life and lose years of your life, most likely, because I honestly don't feel like she's not going to get off. Okay, just because of who your daddy is, don't nobody give a shit at this point in time. But, you know, and I feel like she deserves to go to jail for at least a year, you know, because that's fucked up. I don't give a care who your daddy is or who um, the situation is. You could have killed that girl. And to me, that's attempted murder, if you ask me. Over a fucking nigga that's cheating on you, and then you're going to go back with him, and you know that's how it is? Like, come on. Come on. How dumb can you be? And your daddy is Floyd Mayweather, but he ain't too fucking bright either, so that ain't, that, that don't mean shit. That don't mean shit. But anyway, I'm just like, really? These young, dumb kids are not being raised right. And then her mother just passed away. Her mother just passed away. You are about to lose your life over a fucking dude, a fucking young ass, dumb ass boy. Like, come on. I just don't understand it. It just, oh, it, and then they saying now that my wife, my wife, <laughs> He get into it with Kodak Black. Trust and believe I'm trying to understand how is Kodak Black tweeting so much and, and or I should say Instagramming so much from jail. How is this happening? Okay, who is giving him the privilege? Now, I just seen some things on 90 day, um, days in, six days, uh, what is it, 60 days in. They do be having little tablets and stuff like that. I get that, but damn, but damn, bitch. I ain't know they had internet access like that. Girl, what was the Wi-Fi? Um, do they get their Wi-Fi restricted or whatever when they get in um, pr uh, trouble or whatever? I'm confused, okay? Jail didn't came up with the times because, bitch, back in the day, you couldn't have nothing up in there, all right? You couldn't do shit, bitch. But, um, yeah, she doing all this, and now she's facing up to 99 years in jail. She ain't going to do all that, okay? She ain't going to do all that. She got hit with an aggravated assault. She better be glad she didn't get hit with attempted murder, okay? Because, technically speaking, that could have been it because the girl was in critical condition at one point, you know? And I'm pretty sure if she do get jail time, it's probably going to be a couple of years, a year to a, to a year to two years. That's what I feel like it might be. Or she might get hit with probation and community service, what they always give them. But she needs something because that's fucked up. And in this time, what we supposed to be fucking quarantined, you fighting over dick. Girl, girl. Any fucking way, these young kids, I tell you, you know, and I can't even say these young kids because you got some older ones that's around my age and around your age that do some dumb shit like this too, that ain't grown up, 
girl, the maturity level just ain't there. And speaking of some people that need to grow the fuck up and they too old to be doing what they doing, NeNe Leakes, Wendy Williams, and Candy Barras Tucker, okay? And more so on NeNe and Wendy, you know what I'm saying? Now, see, we got a twofold thing that's going on here. Let's get into the NeNe versus um, Wendy Williams. NeNe is in her feelings, or I should say, Wendy versus NeNe, because Wendy started this. Wendy started this in the sense that she made it public. She made it public that she had an issue, and I honestly feel like she only did it because she ain't really had nothing else to talk about on her show, you know, given that she was working from home. Um, NeNe was live on her Instagram, and she had called um, Wendy Williams and was trying to get her to FaceTime and all this stuff, and, you know, Wendy Williams was like, no, because she was trying to say it was a whole bunch of people there, and technically speaking, it wasn't nobody there but Nene and somebody else that was there doing the camera or whatever, but if you want to say a whole bunch of people, it was the people that was on live, you know, her fans that was on live, but, you know, she wanted her to get on FaceTime, and that didn't happen, and, you know, she didn't call back, and, you know, Wendy made a big deal out of this, okay, and she was like, people told me about Nene, told me about Nene, and told me to do this and woo 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 and to watch out for her, whatever. And I'm like, so y'all was friends at one point. Y'all friendship fractured and you weren't really talking. Y'all just made up and y'all been good girlfriends now. And now you put this information out there um, for public public consumption for what for what like to start some beef between y'all two we already knew that the friendship between y'all was either fake or it wasn't gonna last and now you didn't put the nail in the coffin almost by putting this out here do you think wendy was right to put that out there like that to put her feelings about it out there like that or should she had come to nene do you feel as though well nene tried to put her on make her stuff public by trying to put her on facetime on live you know um so, therefore, she can do this to, but that was only to a couple of hundred, a few thousand people, if that, you know. But this is to millions of people that actually watch Wendy Williams, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it was crazy. And then Nene basically got on her live again and said, I'm not talking about nothing that I'm not getting paid for. I'm not talking about no uh, social media beast or whatever that I'm not getting paid for or whatever the fuck. So, I don't even know. Like... They too much of the same people, you know what I'm saying? Um, and the way that Wendy was talking about it, like, she was like, I don't get, I don't, I don't lower myself. It was almost like she was saying she don't lower herself to be on these reality shows. She ain't one of those reality shows, girl. But you talk about that shit on your show. That 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 helps your show. So y'all need each other. I don't know. I don't know. Then we get this whole thing with Nene versus Candy. Um. <sighs> Once again, Nene had did something on her YouTube channel. I believe it was her YouTube channel where she went live and she was talking about, or I don't know if she was live or whatever, but she did a video of something talking about, you know, um, a portion of it was talking about how she was trying to get a TV show and she's just trying to understand how come certain cast members of The Real Housewives of Atlanta can get all these spinoff shows or whatever, but yet when it comes to her, she can't get one and it feels like somebody is blocking that certain cast member or whoever is trying to block her from getting these shows. Shows. And the only person that has gotten multiple spinoffs from Real Housewives of Atlanta cat of the cast is Candy Burst. Okay, and it's been some friction that's been going on between them two um, behind the scenes, and we've been seeing it play out on their YouTube and their their social medias or whatever. And Nene has just been getting into it with just about everybody. She's coming off so fucking bitter and so much of a hater. First, you talking about Eva. Granted, most of the stuff that she said about Eva not being important, not really bringing us into the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise, that's understandable because she is forgettable on this season. She is forgettable. But you did not have to put that out there. Why did you have to put that out there knowing that it was going to start drama? It wasn't going to be out of love or whatever. You could have said no comment if somebody asked you that or, you know, you, you could have bypassed the whole thing. To be quite honest, you put that out there to start drama, to start mess. And it didn't go the way that you wanted it to go because it made you look like you was bitter, like you had some issues with Eva, like you was a hater. That's what it makes you look like. And now this whole thing with Candy, you trying to say, you know, Candy put up a post basically trying to defend herself and trying to say, bitch, I ain't the one, you know, you trying to make it seem as if I said it was, an, uh, I took it as a misunderstanding or whatever. No, it was clear as day. You was talking about Candy. And if I would, uh, was talking about you, I would have added you. You basically said her without saying her name. 
Okay, and I can't stand when people put stuff out there passive aggressively or subliminally or indirectly. And then when they get caught and people find out who they talking about and that person calls them out. If I wanted to say something to you and I had something to say, I would have added you. I would have told you I would have called you up. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Okay, because it. <laughs> Like, stop it. Like, if you so big and bad to say it, then go ahead and stand in it because we're not dumb. We're not dumb. The only person on that cast that has had multiple spinoffs is Candy, okay? You had your little wedding special. Portia had her little baby special um, or her almost wedding special or whatever with Dennis. That's it, okay? And I think all of them in, were three episodes long. All of them have been like three episodes long, okay? And so, Candy has had multiple, and Candy has another one that's coming up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, I don't understand the hate. I don't understand the issue, what's going on. Um, I, I do know that Candy and Nene has had their history that they kind of clash, especially when Candy first came onto the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but... It's just not a good look, Nene. It's not a good look for nobody in particular. It's not a good look for Candy to go to say anything and to go back. But I understand trying to rebut and to, you know, prove that you ain't you ain't done shit to nobody or whatever. That's a natural reaction. But it's not a good look to be this grown and to have this much issues and throwing these shots or whatever for what. You're bored. I mean, we're all bored. But a lot of us are doing stuff that... You know, actually creative, you know what I'm saying? Probably catching up on stuff that we never thought that we would ever finish or whatever. You know, taking on different projects, trying to find ways to make extra income or whatever. We're not trying to start beef out here. Which I, and speaking of another beef, okay? And I don't even know what the fuck the beef was about. But Rai Ali versus Cardi B, bitch, don't nobody give a shit, okay? Don't nobody give a shit about Rai Ali. Like, you're bored. You're bored. I don't know what they was beefing over. Cardi, you're bored too, okay? You're bored, and I say you're bored because you engaged into the shit. I don't know what it was. I don't know who started the shit, and I truly don't care. We don't give a shit about this whack-ass stuff, okay? And I'm pretty sure they was beefing over some old shit. And then I know I seen one part where, you know, Cardi was just threatening to expose um, Rod's relationship. She threatening to expose her relationship. And I'm just like... 9 out of 10, both y'all probably would ain't shit niggas. Cardi, we know you would ain't shit niggas. So, it is what it is. Y'all doing the same thing to each other. Like, let that shit go and mind your business. Y'all both got families, right? You both got families. You got husbands and stuff like that. Take care of that. Take care of that and stop messing around with other people. Like, ugh, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Um, Speaking of Real Housewives, Sheree Whitfield, okay? Her mother has been missing since March 23rd, and that that's around the time where everybody went on lockdown, okay? So, um, that is sad. Regardless of how you may feel about Sheree, Sheree, um, I hope they find her mother. I hope they really do. Like, that's fucked up. Don't nobody want to, especially during this time, especially you don't know where they at and if they... Uh, Oh, Jesus. And that's your mom, too? And then don't let her be close to her mother, too. And you know she is because she had Chateau Charette in her mama's name. Okay, how close can you get? You know what I'm saying? But I hope I hope everything works out. I hope they find her. Um, I just had an incident where uh, somebody I know, they was looking for their aunt, uh, a family member, their aunt, and they hadn't seen her for a while and she has a medical condition that causes her to pass out you know and thank god they found her you know what i'm saying don't nobody especially during this time we don't need that okay we don't need the added stress so i really do hope and pray that they do find her mother and she's okay i really do um <clears throat> Bernie Sanders suspended his campaign for the U.S. Um, Democratic uh, nomination. Now, I've been seeing reports that said just because he suspended his campaign does not mean that he dropped out of the um, the race or whatever. So you can still kind of vote for him. Put down in the comments if that is correct. If you know for sure if that is correct. Okay. But if it is to the point where Bernie Sanders is not the Democratic nomination, uh, and it do, or I should say nominee, and it does go to Joe Biden. Please, to my Bernie Sanders um, watchers, okay, I I really was not here for 
Joe Biden. And I really was not here for Bernie Sanders. Nobody was really clicking my bell, okay, in this Democratic um race or whatever. Till this day, no one has really won me over. And that's on all fronts, okay? But here's the thing. Please do not let us have a repeat of 2016 and y'all get so upset and in y'all feelings that your boy did not get the nomination and then y'all go vote independent or y'all go vote for Trump or y'all go vote for somebody else and then we get another Trump presidency. That's what happened in 2016. Regardless of how you feel about the DNC backing, you know, Joe Biden and being this machine and already wanting him to come and win and all that stuff, that may be all well said and good, okay? And it may be true. It most likely is true. But at the end of the day, our core mission at this point should be trying to get that man up out of the White House and get somebody else in there that is not a Republican, that's not on the same line of thinking of him, okay? You know, and... We need to come together at this point. This is not a time where we should be bashing each other. This is not a time that we should be in our feelings. Feel down for a couple of minutes, and then let's get back on the ball. Let Change our goals around, okay? First, the goal probably was to get Bernie the nomination. Oh, that shit didn't happen. Now the goal is to get this man out of fucking office and get somebody else in there. That's what needs to happen, okay? That's what needs to happen. Um, Moving on from that. The Weekend vs. Usher's Climax. <sighs> Talk about <laughs> random, okay? Girl, I'm in my business and I got assaulted with this shit for the past couple of days or so. I said, bitch, I know you are not playing the weekend. Weekend, now you need to enjoy your little success that you are having because out of all the people that's been releasing music during this quarantine time... The weekend is the one that's really actually uh, out here putting out the numbers, okay? The girls are flocking to him. You know what I'm saying? They are streaming his shit. He is in the top, what, top two, top one? He's still like number one or number two on Billboard 200 or whatever. He is doing the damn thing. Getting these streams out here, getting people listening to his shit. And I don't even see him promoting stuff or whatever. I know he just dropped a video or whatever. The album is cute or whatever, but... I don't know who he was talking to, but the quote came out saying that, you know, at one point he was listening to when uh, Usher Climax came out, which came out like eight, nine years ago. Okay. Came out a while ago. He was like, okay, this is cute. Wait a minute. This sounds like The weekend. First of all, imitation is flattering, but damn, I was a little upset that, you know, this motherfucker kind of trying to bite my style or some shit. My sound. I'm sitting here like... That was basically what he was trying to say, okay? I may not have gotten the word right, but that's basically what he was trying to say. And I'm sitting here like, sir, we all on the internet and sitting here like, wait the fuck a minute. When Climax came out, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. First of all, I didn't like the song. That's one, all right? Not that I didn't like the song. I could care less for it. I ain't, I ain't like it. I ain't love it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or I ain't like it. I ain't hate it. You know? If it was on, I'd let it play. But... Never, not one time, listening to Usher's Climax, have I ever said, hmm, that sounds like something familiar. Who, who, um, 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 damn, who does that sound like? The Weeknd, yes, no, no. Now, when I listen to The Weeknd, baby, The Weeknd makes me want to go do drugs. Sometimes the weekend make me want to be depressed and go do drugs at the same time. The weekend make me want to go have sex, okay, and be high off of drugs and depression while I'm doing that, okay. That's what the weekend music makes me want to do. Except for when he put the little party beats up in there. Sometimes here and there, he'll throw a couple of them little pop tunes up in there here and there, okay. But other than that, no, that's what the weekend music make me want to do. That song did not make me want to do none of that. I said that ain't I ain't never. I ain't never associate Usher and The Weeknd together like that. I said, how? How did you come to that conclusion? I was eating jelly beans, okay? And that's because it's bothering me. I got to go brush my teeth when I get through with this um, because it's bothering me. Anyway, I'm just like, how? How did you get that conclusion? And then you got people on the internet, this young-ass generation who is out here disrespecting the fuck out of goddamn Usher and the shit that he has done. Bitch, let me just tell you something. You, oh, 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 motherfucker, okay? Because if I can go in, I can fucking go in. Usher had 
Fuck Confessions, okay? We know Confessions of all times. That is his greatest album right then and there. And that's what people going to think. that is. That's one of his better albums, Confessions. That, that motherfucker went um, diamond, which is over 10 times platinum. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day where you actually had to go out and you had to buy the actual CD, not stream it, okay? Yes, Usher was selling out. Usher was winning awards. Usher was an artist. He was a fucking entertainer, and he still is. I am actually, he is in my top three of the people that I am anticipating the new um, album to come out for. The Confessions Part 3 or Confessions 2 or whatever, the second part or whatever, bitch the album, I'm waiting for that shit to come out. Okay, and speaking of him and Lil John and Ludacris dropped the new song, Sex Beat, you know, and I'm here for the shit, okay? Um, that piano intro, yes, everything. But um, comparing that to The weekend. The weekend whose songs all sound the fuck the same. Usher gives us variety, okay? Usher been in this game forever. And then I seen this little headline from Vulture magazine or whoever it was on the Vulture account said, call Usher a, a, a extra from Hustlers, the movie. I said, how fucking disrespectful can you fucking get, okay? Before a fucking weekend, there was Usher. And after the fucking weekend, I'm pretty sure Usher will still fucking be here. Because we're going to get tired of the same old shit from the fucking weekend. Okay, somebody going to finally call it out and say, bitch, you're putting out the same shit all over and over again. Okay, Usher has had longevity. Okay, people trashed that boy when he got married and he still came back fucking strong, bitch. Okay, stop that shit. You know, he went through his little phase where he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. He was trying to be young or whatever. But now he trying to come back and be who the fuck he is and put out some good ass shit. How fucking dare you, bitch? Go back and listen to his first fucking album. Cute as shit. Go back and listen to motherfucking My Way, bitch. That motherfucker alone could shit on goddamn we um the weekend shit. No fucking lie. Bitch, go listen to 87 fucking 01, bitch. Can you fucking help me, bitch? Girl, you better get the fuck up out of here with that shit. Confession shits on his whole fucking catalog, bitch. Don't do that. Don't do that. Y'all, y'all young kids gotta learn today, okay? You don't do that. Get that man the proper fucking respect and um 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 value that he fucking deserves, okay? Don't shit on Usher like that. No. Cause Usher will come out and I'll sing your ass. For fucking filth, okay? Especially you weekend. Give Michael Jackson back his style. That's what you need to do, okay? And then he want to come out and say, see, the media comes out and he they just twist things or whatever. Usher is king and all this shit. Yeah, you better um, clear that up. You clear that up because people was, you know, this debate that was going on. Girl, the internet was crazy. I was just sitting here. I ain't engaged. I was just baffled. I was befuddled This shit. I said, the Usher? They call me U S H E R R A Y M O N D. Now, baby, tell me what you want to do with me. Got me feeling like Joe to see. No, no, we're not finna do that. We're not finna do that. Usher, who was talking in French on nice and slow at the beginning in the video. Uh uh, not that. Not that. Mm -mm. Usher, who had Tyrese dancing in his video for She Likes It My Way. Uh uh, not that, Usher. Usher, who said Let It Burn. Mm mm. Usher, who said you was sexing everybody but me. Uh-uh, no, we not about to do that. Usher, who was fucking around with Chili and then fucked around on Chili? Oh, no, we not about to do that. We not about to do that. Baby, I'll give you an education, okay? Let me tell you something. What you not gonna do is play with my era of music. <laughs> Woo! All right, bitch, I went off. Moving on from that, um, um, <clears throat> Raven and Ke Keely made up, okay? Raven Simone and Keely had their little outs or whatever. I already spoke on it in the live if you saw it. The whole thing where Keely basically said that, listen, bitch, I don't feel like I deserve, I don't owe nobody a goddamn apology, especially not Notori. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Adrian was a fake ass bitch. Okay. She acted like she was my motherfucking friend, but she wasn't. And I'm sitting here like you saying that you don't owe nobody no apologies. Okay. But yet everybody seems to have the issue with you and you seem to be the common denominator. All right. And so, you know, Raven got on her little, um, live with Brianna from growing up hip hop. They was talking about it, making throwing shade and shots and shit like that. Next thing you know, the other day, Raven got on live with um Keely and they had a little discussion. Keely admitted that, you know, Cheetah Girls Three, truth be told, I forgot all about Cheetah Girls Three. Okay. Cheetah Girls Three did not go anywhere because Raven was not in there. This was the first one on one that they had since Cheetah Girls One. Okay. 
Um, cause Raven felt like, you know, the girls was clicked up and left her out, you know, so she just, it wasn't a happy place. Um, um, we find out that Keely was pissed off at Adrian cause Adrian didn't even come to her father's funeral. Didn't even say, you know, condolences that when my father died or whatever, I was like, okay, cool. I understand. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, the girls was just going at it. So they made peace for the most part. But baby, when that call ended and Raven started laughing, <laughs> she was eating that peanut butter jelly sandwich after she folded it. I said, bitch, the shade. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's what took me out when she said, wow. <laughs> but girl, Keely, get your shit together. You really do need to get to get your life. Okay. Um, Moving on from that relationships during quarantine somebody wanted me to speak on this what you want to know what are you talking about okay what type of relationship are you talking about listen if you're talking about let me tell you something no matter what the situation that situation can build a relationship or it can break a relationship now uh some of y'all are in quarantine with people that you can't stand okay the relationship was already on the rocks and i feel sorry for y'all and maybe y'all going to use this time to continue to be on the rocks. Or you could have used this time to, you know, try to figure out your problems since you're forced to be with this person 24-7 at this point. You know what I'm saying? Unless y'all going to be up in separate rooms and saying, fuck you. Okay? It's up to you what you want to use. Okay? If you really want that relationship to be salvaged, you will try to fix it. You know? And this is the perfect time to do so. Because you can't do nothing. There is nothing else to do but to talk to one another. Okay? Unless you're just going to go to your separate corners and, and you look at Netflix and he play video games or vice versa whatever you know um trying to get into relationships during quarantine girl all you can do right now is talk now i'm available to talk okay so hey what's up um and, and, and let me just tell you this because y'all keep on asking did that girl or whoever the fuck was talking about something i sent you these dm dms and all this stuff whatever one no dms okay so don't 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 play me like that and don't 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 badger me when you ain't got nothing to say okay um but anyway yes Y'all got to figure that shit out. This shit going to either bring y'all asses together or bring y'all asses apart. And I feel like it's a good time to, you know, uh, connect with folks or whatever and to, you know, just have a little conversation. This time is literally forcing people to actually talk to people if they want to. That we got to go back to communication and not just fucking. You know what I'm saying? Go back to fucking communicating. Okay. Hey, girl, what's your favorite color? I know we tired of doing that shit. We tired of doing that shit, but that's how you get to know people. Okay. Get to know people. Ooh. On the intellectual level. Y'all, I know y'all saw that. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I called it. I called it, bitch. Um, speaking of my mouth dry. I'm a little parch. <laughs> Moving on from that. Y'all tell me how y'all relationships are faring. Okay? Um, you know, I know a lot of introverts. We thriving in this um situation. Okay? But, you know, it's nice to have somebody to little talk to and she key key with and, you know, sit up on the phone and watch TV with. That's cute. That's cute. Um, If you got that, that's fine. You know? Have at it. I hope everybody... I know y'all kids driving y'all crazy, though. I know y'all kids driving y'all crazy and I'm going to pray for y'all. Um, Pray this over soon. But moving on from that, um, Rihanna and Jack from Twitter, you know, they put forth uh four point two million dollars for the domestic uh violence um <clears throat> victims during this time, you know, people that gotta be forced to stay with their abusers at this time and which is unfortunate, um, so that they can find somewhere to go or, you know, just to help them or um, you know, those who got out the situation and looking for some place to go, you know, so that is a good look. And I believe um Jack also put up one billion of his money or whatever to help the um situation the virus situation so that's cool um tony braxton and birdman they supposed to be getting married for real for real august 2020 sis if it's gonna happen please let it happen okay because truth be told you know we it ain't our business because that's just what it is it ain't our business i didn't even know they were still together and i guess that's how they wanted it and that's cool keep your shit out the goddamn blogs and stuff like that you know you don't want people talking down on your relationship and i'm rooting for them i hope they happen i hope they happen i really do um brielle let me tell you something kim zoziak get your daughter you know what she's a grown-ass woman i'm gonna dress her grown woman to grown woman Young grown woman to grown woman because you, I had to put young because she's young and dumb. 
she put out a tweet basically saying, regardless of how you may feel about Trump, um, basically, you know, you nobody wants to be bullied. We should stop bullying him because everybody has feelings, and I'm pretty sure his feelings get hurt when people be bullying him and all this stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, girl, do you not see what he does? Okay? Ain't no sympathy or empathy to that man. Okay? Not with the way he's acting and controlling this whole thing and doing this whole thing. Like, no. No. Be quiet. If this is not your lane to speak on, please just be quiet. Okay? Sit this one out. All right? We didn't ask you to speak on anything else, and we damn sure didn't ask you to speak on this. Okay? Excuse me. I know everybody has an opinion, but goddamn. Let your opinion mean something. And that opinion meant absolutely shit. Okay? That's what it was. Um, Did I get everything? My 600 pound life. I don't know if y'all been watching that, but the one that came on this week, wow. Well, listen, if you've been watching Catfish that came on, this recent Catfish, there was this big rude bitch. I spoke about her. Her name was Ashley. I was so fucking mad that her name was Ashley and she was a fat bitch at that, okay? And I'm saying this because she's a rude ass bitch and she deserves it. She deserves it, okay? Listen, you can't be fat as shit and then be rude as shit at the same time, okay? You you got to pick a struggle, you know what I'm saying? Because that just don't look right. That don't look right, all right? We already know that you upset at the world because of you upset with yourself, okay? That's what it is. That's why you rude as shit, you know? And you got yourself into this situation to being a fat bitch. That's what it is, okay? Um, so how dare you take it out on people around you? She was on there catfishing, and she was on two episodes catfishing two people, a girl and a guy. You know what I'm saying? This bitch was on my 600 pounds life that came on this weekend, this week, okay? Playing games, playing fucking games, up here faking the whole shit, and Doctor Na- and snapped the fuck off on Doctor Now. Bitch, Dr. Now was better than me because she let that little bitch come back, okay? I would have knocked her in her throat if I would have found that bitch, okay? I would have hit her in her air pipe, okay? You don't do no shit like that when people trying to fucking help you. That bitch, don't put her back on TV because she gets off on this shit, okay? I was like, that's that fat bitch from goddamn Catfish. I know, and ooh, it still had the same fucking pants on and everything. I said, ain't this about a bitch? I said, when I say... She was doing her best acting and not acting at the same time. You saw right through the whole shit, okay? And Dr. Now knew that he she was on some bullshit too. Girl, don't waste these people time. Don't waste these people time. Y'all giving the wrong people airtime. And I'm upset about it. Us creators, we out here really doing a damn thing, especially the people that I associate with. We out here doing this damn thing. Give us some time, okay? Give us some time. You know what I'm saying? Work with us. Don't work with them that's out here fucking around and playing games with shit. Okay? But anyway, um, 90 Day Fiance. I just wanted to touch on a couple of things about 90 Day Fiance. Listen, Yolanda, they trying to get my good sis Yolanda, bitch. Okay? Yolanda's so naive. Yolanda's so damn naive. It don't make no sense. Mama still was trying to talk to the Williams. Okay? And this man... Instagram and changed and everything. It's a Nigerian number. Okay, call the number. Some woman pick up the phone and then hangs up and then sent her a fucking email saying, "If you don't send this amount of fucking money, all your little private photos gonna go public." I said, "Bitch, they trying to do her in." That looks. She looked like a good guy fearing woman. Okay, and she just got caught up in the goddamn game. What she ever do to hurt anybody? Nothing. Nothing, okay? I said, no, y'all would not do her like that. I said, damn, that's fucked up. Girl, she was like, the only person I ever sent some photos to was the Williams, so of course it got to be him. I said, now you see that what your daughter was telling you, you know, it was all fucking fake, girl. And then Ed. So I said, Ed looks like the mucinac. I don't like talking about people like that. Even though I know I have, uh, unless they need it, you know what I'm saying? I don't like just, you know, talking about people out the blue and they ain't done nothing that's deserving of being talked about. But somebody said on Twitter that Ed looked like the mucinex, uh, mucinex for the mu- mucus, that cold medicine, the blob that they have on the, uh, the mucus blob that they have on the commercials, that green thing. That's what he looked like. And I can't unsee it. Because yes. And he really pissed me off when he told uh, Rosemary to go shave her legs. He was like, I don't like um, people who got unshaved legs because I feel like it's unfeminine. God didn't feel that way. That's why he put the hair on our bodies, bitch. Okay. 
Girl, when he said that, I said, bitch, you asking a goddamn lot. You are asking a lot. The way she be looking at him like she be ready to cuss his ass out and then she had to think, money, money, money. I'm trying to get to America. I'm trying to get to a better position. Because listen, I, I wanted to cuss him out for that. But baby, if I was Ed, I would have turned the fuck right back around when I saw that village. Okay, all that garbage and shit like that. And I understand that's the circumstances that we are. Um, she was dealt with. But baby, my nerves and my germ germophobia and just the paranoia in me that something is going to crawl on me. Something is going to get on me. Um, It just wouldn't let me. I would have said turn back around. I love you, but you know, I can't. I can't. I just can't focus. I can't do it. I can't do it. Girl, it just wouldn't have been me. It just wouldn't have been me. Mm-mm. 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 And they need to get Usain, Us, Usman and um, Lisa off of here because we already got uh, Michael and Angela. All right. And they more entertaining. Okay. Lisa, you're getting played. You're getting played. That's all I'm going to say that. You're getting played. Girl, when they played that track up in that club and ain't nobody say nothing. <laughs> They said, run, bitch. He after your money. <laughs> Woo. And the last thing that I want to talk about, little fires everywhere. This episode six, baby, if you have not seen it, basically it was a retro episode, meaning that it went back in time and we got the backstory on Mia and Elena. And the one that was actually more interesting was, of course, Mia's um, little storyline. Now, Elena... You know, she went from having this boyfriend up in Paris, um, who went to Paris with her for four months. She came back, you know, found and got with her husband. They wound up having three kids. And of her third child, she went back to work. And as soon as she get back to work, she found out that she was fucking pregnant again, bitch. Okay? Now, she already in her feelings that she got to take off all this time from um, work. With the last pregnancy, and it caused her to miss a position that she really truly wanted, you know. And so she don't want to do that no more. And now she's telling her husband, like, you know, what am I gonna do? Because she really didn't even want the baby. That's why Izzy don't fuck with her. Cause Izzy know that bitch, you ain't really want with me. Like, you ain't really want me like that. Okay, so that's why I'm gonna be the hardest baby that you ever had. And Izzy was giving her all type of fucking problems, bitch. She went to a point where she had a nervous breakdown, broke all the fucking dishes in the house. And then went and called up the old dick, okay, and was about to get her some of that old dick, okay, up until he tried to touch them boobs and them boobs was sore because they was filled with milk, bitch. I said, damn it, the boobs stopped the shit. And as soon as he touched them things, she said, oh shit, hold on one second. Snap that bitch back into reality that she had a whole ass family across town. <laughs> I was mad. I said, girl, I be wanting her to go ahead and loosen the fuck up and get some skirt. Because it don't look like her husband fucking her right. It really just don't. I mean, every time he fuck her, she get pregnant. But shit. Okay? Now, I see why they probably, you know, fuck on the schedule. Because shit, bitch. Every time we have sex, we get pregnant. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. You know? And then the story with Mia. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> When Mia was an art student and her professor was Paulina Hawthorne, played by Anika Noni Rose, who was absolutely beautiful. I said, damn, bitch, you is stunning. God damn. I was sitting here like, what's up, Juice Glock? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, I like your hair. <laughs> like, she was beautiful as shit. I said, damn, Nika, you've been like this all the time. But anyway, you can feel the tension between them. When I tell you Tiffany Boone deserve a fucking award for playing the younger Kerry Washington, a.k.a. Mia, she had Kerry Washington's mannerisms all the way fucking packed down, even to her quivering fucking lip, to when she be shaking and she be looking all like she about to cry and shit, when she be all, girl, when I tell you she had that shit down fucking pack, I said, oh my god, what the fuck am I looking at? This shit is crazy. Girl, I mean, she did that shit, okay? And then they had their little relationship going on or whatever, and then, you know, fucked around, and exactly what I thought, exactly what I thought, she was the surrogate. She was a surrogate. But not for Paulina, but for another couple, okay? And, um, when her brother died, if you ain't seen the episode, you should have already seen it by now. You should have clicked off by now. And her brother died. 
and her mama said, bitch, you can't come to the funeral because you just popped up pregnant and people going to be talking and gossiping and shit. I said, as close as I was to my brother, you going to let me into this goddamn funeral or whatever. Bitch, you ain't finna play me, okay? She took the car and she left and wrote a note to the people that she was holding the baby for. She was carrying their baby for, played by Jesse Williams, his character, plus her, his wife, you know. Uh, instead, I find a way to pay you back the money. And the only reason why she took the surrogacy thing is because she needed money to pay for her um fall semester in school. I said, ain't that about a bitch? And the bitch been on the run ever since. And then fucking found out that her baby motherfucking mama, the one that she really loved, died of ovarian fucking cancer. Ain't that a bitch? I said, what the fuck? That episode had me going like, oh, shit. This show is good as hell, okay? It really is. I don't know if it's only going to be eight episodes because they got the next previews of the next two episodes on the 15th and on the 21st. But, baby, I'm ready. I'm ready, okay? But, um, anyway, if y'all seen to put it down in the comments. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. Um, that's what I'm going to do each what it is. If I, especially if I ain't got nothing to talk about, I'm going to just talk about all the shows that I've been watching and especially give y'all a little update on Little Liars Everywhere. Little Fires Everywhere. But, um, anyway, I hope you guys, I gave y'all a 50 minute video. Yes, bitch. Yes, bitch. I'm giving y'all normal videos. Okay. I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it in this time. I love this. Okay. A bitch know how to talk. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a good time and finding something to do. Be creative somehow. Just stay your asses in the fucking house. I want y'all to do that shit. Okay. Stay your asses in the fucking house. All right. Please. Okay. But, cause I really want y'all to be safe. For my nerves, for your nerves, bitch, I'm so tired of hearing about people catching this virus, and it's just making me so nervous. I just want everybody to be safe, okay? Cool. All right? Y'all, enjoy the rest of your weekend. You do realize that tonight, it is Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday, just in case you ain't had the days right, because I had them all jumped up together. Okay. But uh, enjoy as much as much as possible as you can, okay? Have a good one. Peace.